Thank you for watching, another episode of the Filipino Genealogy Channel. Today, we trace the family tree of a humble, but extremely accomplished, family from Kal Lawin, Erga, Cebu. This is a brief discussion of the Davide family of Cebu. The David Day family rose from being a poor farming family, from one of the mountainous barangays of Urga, Cebu, to become one of the most prominent families in the Philippines. Kalawin is said to have derived its name from the Kalawin plant. This plant is characterized by thorny leaves, commonly found in the forests of Kalawin, and is also said to be symbolic of the lives of the people who lived here in the distant past. The barangay of Kal Lawin is one of the mountain barangays of the municipality of Urga, Cebu. Although Kal Lawin is rich in natural resources, for centuries it remained a poor and hard to reach barangay. Today, Kal Lawin has a thriving agricultural economy. It also produces limestone commonly used for road constructions. The farthest traceable ancestor of the Davides is Pablo Albertu and his wife Maria Ladina. Since Pablo Albertu lived and died before the Claveria decree, we put the Davide last name in parenthesis, indicating that he never used the last name when he was alive. Their son, Francisco Ignacio, also lived and died before Claveria. He is sometimes called Ignacio Modesto or Francisco Modesto in some records. Like his father before him, he was a farmer. He married Norberta Susanna and had seven children, all of which grew to adulthood and have left descendants today. The aforementioned eldest of this brood, Agustin Benito, married Maria Norberta sometime in 1800. It was Agustin Benito's generation that started using Davide as a family name. In compliance with the Claveria decree, the family chose a surname from the list provided by the authorities. While Davide is not in the Catalogo, it is clear that the family based their chosen last name still from the list since David is listed as an option. Some older members of the family said Agustin Benito, the eldest in his generation, must have chosen this surname to remind him, and his family, that no matter how small one feels he is, he can always win the day with determination and hard work, just as David won over the giant Goliath. Davide is a Hispanization of the same Italian last name, in turn derived from the name David, most possibly derived from Hebrew DOD, which means beloved. It is perhaps taken further from the word David, which means loved, or darling or beloved of God, in turn derived from Dadevu. Truly, coincidence or not, there must have been something prophetic with him choosing the surname for his family. Norverta Camber died before Benito, and based on records Benito remarried and had one child, Donato Davide. Benito himself was blessed with his family's longevity, and he died only in 1864 at the ripe age of 87. Miguel Davide, son of Benito, was born sometime in the 1820s, and he married Hilaria Carrillo probably in the 1840s. They had seven children and one of these was Esteban Davide, born in the 1850s. He married Nepomuceña Ortega and one of their children was Pablo de Vide, born on June 26, 1875. This man is considered by the family of former Chief Justice de Vide, as the founder of the present de Vide line in Kal Lawin. He was said to have been a humble but industrious farmer who was well known in their barrio. His humility and good nature earned him the respect of his neighbors, which ultimately led to his being elected as a cabeza de barangay of Kal Lawin in 1877 a position that is roughly equal to that of Barangay Captain today. He served in this capacity until 1884. It must be noted here that the position of Cabeza de Barangay after 1863 became elective and one requirement was fluency in Spanish. We can then surmise that this ancestor of the Davidas, from a humble family, taught himself and mastered Spanish, thus allowing him to be elevated to the Principalia. 
Pablo de Vida later married another Arguanan by the name of Teodora Panirio. The couple, known as Tate Amboy and Nanangdore by their grandchildren, lived a simple life with strict working codes. Pablo de Vida worked on the farm helped by his sons, while his wife and daughters assisted in the preparations for planting and harvesting. Pablo, who many grandchildren remember fondly as being somewhat of a comedian, later on served briefly as municipal councillor of the town of Urgaw from 1924 to 1928. He died in 1946 in Urgaw, Cebu. Pablo de Vida and his wife had 10 children. One of these was Hilario Sr. It was Hilario's sacrifice and exemplary life which prodded his children to succeed in their chosen endeavors. Raised also in the mountain barangay of Kal Lawin, Hilario saw the hardship that one goes through when living in an area as far flung as their hometown. He made a resolve to make his children's lives better, so early on in life he did well in school in order to chart a better future for himself and his future family. It was also while in school where he strengthened his resolve to improve his family's lot. During a graduation ball, he was repeatedly turned down by girls when he asked them to dance with him. He overheard one lady telling her friend that the only reason why she didn't agree to dance with him was because Hilario was from the mountains. This haughty attitude by the city folks towards Hilario and his barrio mates made him even more determined to succeed. Hilario de Vida Sr. was also a prominent figure during World War II. He was considered the civilian head of the guerrillas in Urga, while the Japanese occupied the entire country. All his children finished college and went on to make a name for themselves. His most famous son, Hilario de Vida Jr., served as the 20th Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the Philippines, and then much later the 17th Permanent Representative of the Philippines to the United Nations. His son, Hilario III, was a former first councillor of the city of Cebu, was governor of Cebu from 2013 to 2019, and currently serves as vice governor of the province of Cebu. Another son of Hilario Sr. was Jose. He was a maritime safety engineer of the Philippine Coast Guard, and also served as a municipal councillor of Urga, Cebu. His brother, Jorge, was one of the 10 outstanding young men awardees of 1962 for his exceptional achievement in soil science. He also served as a consultant of the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization in Pakistan. Their sister, Maria Paz, was an outstanding teacher awardee, both in Cebu City and in the whole of Region 7. Another brother, Oscar, worked for several years as a doctor in Truck Island. He was also the chief surgeon of the Southern Islands Hospital, now known as Vicente Sato Memorial Medical Center, until he retired. The next brother, Romulo, founded the Farmer Scientist Program, which has benefited thousands of farmers throughout the country. He served as a board of Region of the University of the Philippines. He was also awarded the Outstanding Scientist Award, the Ramon Magsaysay Award. Finally, the youngest in the family Lena, taught at the University of Illinois, in the United States. Indeed, the Davide family has had a long ride in history. One couldn't even help but relate the history of the family to the history of their family name. Their namesake, David, came from a poor shepherding family who later on became one of the greatest leaders of the Israelites. The Davidas, too, originally from a poor farming family from Kal Lawin, have become one of the prime movers for the advancement and improvement of their town. The family did not just dare to dream, they made sure their dreams came true. So that's it for today's video. We hope you learned something, and enjoyed today's episode. Watch out for another episode, tomorrow at 8 a.m., Philippine Standard Time. As always, thank you for watching, and stay safe always. Goodbye.